Hello, welcome back. This is uh, jQuery part number four, the last part of the jQuery series. And by the way, this is the last lecture of the whole course. So in this uh, part number four, we're going to see uh, the API Ajax as used in jQuery. And also jQuery provides UI, very rich UI widgets, okay, UI widgets for you uh, programmers to use. So let's start with the uh, Ajax. Now, remember we have covered Ajax uh, in a very detail in using the uh, plain or the vanilla JS. Just to review here, uh, it's asynchronous JavaScript and XML. The keyword here is asynchronous. And the, the important object here, or the object that is allowing us to do this Ajax technique is called XML HTTP request. That this is very important object, okay? but in uh, jQuery, you won't manipulate this object since it's transparent, all right? You're going to manipulate this one only when you use normal or vanilla uh, JavaScript. So why uh, Ajax? Remember, guys, so Ajax is about sending data back and forth uh, between the browser uh, or the client and the server. So uh, why also we do that? Because we want to save time, we want to, uh, to, to perform this... Uh, communication uh, in a very efficient way so we don't want to request each time we need data we don't want to reload and request the same page over and over again it's gonna take time guys uh, so what do we do we're gonna request only that part of data and the page will remain the same more or less the same okay or we're gonna uh, uh, upload uh, sorry update only a tiny part or one part of the the page without having the need to request uh, for sending the whole page. Now, uh, there is a big difference between JS Vanilla and jQuery Ajax. Okay, in jQuery Ajax is very concise, less flying, but with the, with the J, JS Vanilla you have to code or everything. Uh, but for me, I don't find it really tricky uh, as long as you put some effort there to, to understand how JS Vanilla is done. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be tricky really. Okay, and you're gonna add some extra code for cross browser uh, compatibility. The cross browser compatibility is only for the IE 6.5, so uh, pre 7 if you like. But who is really using IE 6 nowadays? But believe me, guys, you will be amazed if you uh, know that some people are still using the old browsers. With jQuery, you don't have to take into account the uh, cross-browser functionality because it's um, implemented, okay, already implemented by jQuery. So let me show you here the uh, uh, Ajax as uh, no uh, the Ajax with uh, no jQuery, the plain uh, JavaScript Ajax a revision. So here we have an HTML. Whenever I click on this button. I want to get the age of William. From which file? I have here users files. Okay, this is an XML file, and this is many users. This user here, William, is 42. So I have user ID, email, and age. It's an XML file. I'm going to use this plain JavaScript Ajax to get to update only this part. Every time I click on the button, I will get only this part updated, not the whole page being sent back and forth. So we're going to use this plain Ajax. So here, guys, I'm going to use this in a code here. So let's refresh. Get age of William. So this is done initially, guys. Remember, done content loaded. So in it is run. This line is running. Now, what does this do? It just register a click to the button. Whenever the button here, the very first button is clicked, this file is executed. So let's click on the, the button. So it's here. I clicked and I'm here now. What does this do? The, I already put this one, this function here. It's my own function that is for compatibility stuff. So I go here to create a, a HTTP request, the object itself. Now, is it understood this XML? XML HTTP request, is it understood by this browser? Yes, it's understood, it's supported, so we're going to use it. Otherwise, we'll go here to the old stuff. So, I return the object 
you see here x I call it x HTTP request and this I'm gonna we're gonna play with this one with so many attributes so many uh, properties and so many functions uh, to in order to do the Ajax uh, sending and receiving data so I'm gonna go right away yeah, you see? So the ready state is a property is for means data is on, uh, on the client uh, side now. The status is good, 200. And now the response text is the whole file. Can you see it, guys? It's, it's a text file. Can you see double quote here? And double quote at the end. It's a text file. So I am using here the get age, extracting the age for the user. So I pass that method. And here I use the DOM parser. I'm not going to explain this. We have gone through this one last time. So straight away here. So if lowercase is equal to, to William here for whatever user ID I'm getting there, I use. Okay, let me show you here. I'm going to go straight away here. And I have 42 here. All right. So, uh, guys, can you can go through this one? The last time we have seen how to do the DOM parser, and you see why we use next sibling, next sibling twice here. That's because in my once I get hold of William, this is the William. Once I get to this user ID, I need to go to the next sibling. This is the next sibling. Because I am here, guys, remember? So, next sibling of this is email, next sibling of email is age, and I can extract the inner HTML, which is why we did this. Next element sibling, next element sibling, and we got the inner HTML. Alright, so that's it for the code. See how long is the code here? It's 42 lines, more or less, okay? And now we're going to see how we use Ajax or how we use jQuery to handle the Ajax technology. All right, so uh, the jQuery Ajax is we will be using wrapper functions. So with, you can go here, guys, to this uh, AP, uh, sorry, to this URL where there is documentation, a full documentation for uh, AJAX uh, jQuery. So what do we use? We use the AJAX wrapper function and others as well, like get, post, get JSON. We have so many load. Okay, either use this one or you can use this. This are latest as well. Okay, so so many people they are using this. They are, they are very flexible. Okay, they don't have to use the Ajax, but I'm going to teach you how to use Ajax. All right, so this wrap uh, the properties of the standard XML HTTP request, as I told you earlier. So this is transparent for us from now on. All the properties of this uh, object, famous object, are wrapped in this, either this one, if you use this one, or this one, or this one. Guys, you don't use them all. These are alternatives, by the way. You can use this, or this, or this one, or this one, or this one. All right, so as in plain JavaScript, this is asynchronous uh, call, uh, callback functions. All responses are handled using the callback functions. And the big difference between the this wrapper function and our old XML HTTP request is that no need for the on ready state change or the property, remember, guys, the ready state change. So this is a handler, this is a property. So we don't need them in Ajax, all right? So let's start with the jQuery wrapper function uh, Ajax. I'm going to go here and start the code. So we're going to see here, this, this is what we, had, we saw earlier with no jQuery. Now we're going to see jQuery. With jQuery, I need to remember, guys, include this library. The jQuery min, the minimum, uh, uh, the minimalized, min, sorry, minimized version, the compressed version, and I'm, here I'm using the jQuery Ajax method one. So let's go to method one and see what do we do there. And so here, guys, you see button on click will call this function. In this function, 
I'm gonna rock or I'm gonna create an object. In this object, I provide the URL, my user, data. I don't need to send any data, so it's an empty. This is when we use get, remember guys, user ID, and we can put some uh, something here. Okay, whatever. So, but here we are not using this. We are sending we are sending no data to the server. We use this one usually when we use PHP, okay? When you use PHP files. Okay, if you have a PHP file, I'm requesting to for my data to be processed on the server, so I send my data. But here it's just requesting data from the server. So no need to send some data here. Success when so yeah, I don't need the 200 or the 4 received or whatever. Success is when the data is or the the data is, is uh, we 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 receive the data back on the client side and the response text is going to be the response, the status, and this is the an object the XML HTTP request. And here I call my function. All right, you see my function here. This one and if it's not success it's an error so i'm gonna say uh, some error and then remember so here this is just my object my ajax configuration object now i'm gonna pass my ajax configuration object to this function this wrapper predefined jquery function remember this is jquery okay and this will return the results so let's use this example, guys. It's test. Uh, it's test one. So I'm gonna go here and use test one here. All right. I'm gonna choose my jQuery and put the right toggle point. So here the toggle point to create the object, and here to run the object. So I'm going to use here something as well. So let's go here. See guys, so I am there. I'm going to create the object, configuration object, and run it. Now the moment I click on the data here, see, I'll be shot there. Oh, I have an error here, sorry. What's the error? Uh, not found. You see, uh, not found. My users XLM. So, mm. uh, my users XML. My users XML. Okay, so let's refresh. Why is it still? Refresh. Okay, so I'm there now. You see, it's trapped here. So get you. So see, guys, here the function success. It's a predefined function. Okay, so here response text. You see, it's the whole document. The status is success. And this is the object. Remember the XML HTTP request that is transparent to us. So if you go here, you can see your X, uh, X you call it XHR. So you see the status, guys. Do you remember the status? 200. Do you remember the response text? Is the whole text? Okay, so they are all there, but they are transparent to us. So here are the response text. I'm going to send it here. So you see. Response text is a document. It's already in XML. I don't need to parse it. That's the goodness about this. So here you see, I go to get user age and I don't have to parse it, which is really good. Nice. So my response text is not a text per se, but it's a it's a it's a document. It's an XML document that I don't do not need to parse it. You see here when I do my response text dot get image by user ID, it's gonna give me an array of all user IDs. Can you see the, them here? And I continue with the same code here, and I will have 22. This is for Claire, not for William. Alright? So that's how we use 
the uh, jQuery, the Ajax jQuery guy. So you see here, I have Ajax, and here you see the curly bracket is an object which has URL or property and value. URL value, URL data here, sorry, data and the value uh, type is get for another code. Now, success function. The data that you get, XML, which, whatever, JSON maybe, the status is 200 usually, and the object request. And you do something here. And what I did, me, I extracted the 22. When it's an error, okay, fail or failure, we can run a function, a callback function with the error type, uh, error type, sorry, and the request object, the XML HTTP request object. Now, guys, the success and the error success and the error and also we have something complete are kind of obsolete deprecated we have replaced them uh, with the three version jquery 3 version with done for the success fail for the error and always for the complete all right so i'm going to show you with the the other one not the success error but with the done and fail So with the done and fail, what do I do? I'm going to remove this. So not success and error, but we'll be using. So this is the, my Ajax calling uh, or running using this um, object. Okay. And here I'm going to use the done and the fail. So when it's done, when the request is done, I am calling the function, the callback function with the response text, status, and XML. I'm going logging here, guys. Done. Let's put here using or using done. Okay, done. Done. That's done. Okay. And I call the response text here. And for the fail, I can go to an error and put whatever error I want. Or I am here just putting here failure. Okay. Failure. Some error happened. Now. The error, what kind of error can happen? Maybe the, the file is not found, okay? Or uh, you, are, you don't have any right to access the file, okay? That's another one. Or there is an error in the file itself. So let's use this one. So I'm going to refresh. And I'm going to chop here, all right? So here it creates only the object. Can you see, guys? I just created the object with the URL and data. Data is empty, OK? Now I call the function here, the Ajax, with this object. Because I'm, I need to pass the URL. Guys, can you see that the URL is very important? It's the one, it's, that's, that's the one that is uh, compulsory, OK? Others can be optional. So when I run this, I got trapped here. So you see done, guys. I can see the XHR here, but I don't need really to work with it. So remember the status, 200. Can you see here also, I can also go to ready state, four, remember the four, guys. Uh, so, and the status or the text, I for, forgot the text also. You can also see the text, uh, response text. Can you see the text there? Or the response, or uh, response XML, which is a document. So, console here, log done. So, if you go to console, you see done here. And here we are using the, the done function, okay? Not the success. And the rest is pretty much the same here. It's going to give you 22. All right. So we have two ways. Either we use this, okay, or we use the uh, done. Can you see done here? And fail. And the Ajax accepts a configuration object. We use it earlier, remember, here. This is the object, begin and end. And this is a compact Ajax version where you have Ajax. Sorry, guys, here it's supposed to be a dot. 
Ajax and the object configuration is here with the URL data type and if you're using success and error it can be inside but if you're using done and fail I tried it cannot be inside it has to be outside like we did here alright so this is my Ajax here guys can you see this is my configuration object where I put it here URL and so on and this is the done and Fail. If you don't use done and fail and use the older one success, so this what I used earlier. If you remember, guys, and here my data, my URL, my success and error, all of them are inside the object, and I pass the object here. The success and error can be inside, but if you use done and fail, I tried. It cannot be inside. It has to be outside. This is latest version these are obsolete the error and the other one the success are obsolete the complete is also uh, obsolete complete is also obsolete and it's changed or by always all right uh, some other so if you don't use ajax you can use load it's very efficient and I mean, very concise very flexible just write it once, okay? Or you can use get and you can use post. All right? URL is required, can you see? Uh, but, but, but the data and the functions here are optional. So all these are optional. You can just load the data right away from the server into your selector here. So it's very efficient to load the get and the post as well. All right? Um, so that's it for the Ajax. I'm going to uh, publish all this uh, demo. Now for the other part, uh, so we have seen this. For the other part, jQuery, guys, is really easy, all right? Just have to go to the jQuery. There are, it has many plugins there. And you have to go to this uh, jQuery UI and go through the uh, widgets, UI widgets, see their documentation, what kind of parameters they need, uh, check the API, so the UI widgets here, in order to use them in your uh, code. Alright, so we have date pickers, we have accordion buttons, menu, dialogues, boxes, uh, sliders, progress bars, so many. And we have also themes, okay, written in HTML, CSS, that goes along with this widget. So whenever you use a widget, you need to use a theme with it. All right, and they are all customizable through the API. You can really change the parameters. So an example here, I'm going to show you an example. Mm, it's part number three. So see here, guys, this is the script for the, uh, this is the jQuery query here. You see, guys, it's compressed. Now, if I'm going to use a date picker, I have to include the UI. Can you see the UI, guys, here? So I have to include the plugin. That's the plugin for my UI. This is for the general jQuery, but this one is for the widget UI, jQuery UI. If you remove this, this would not be uh, able to run. Now, this date picker goes along. I mean, we need also sometimes uh, the themes, okay? Some really nice themes that goes along. All right, so also you need to include them. This is the CSS here. You see them, guys? So whenever you use, this is the link, the theme, and this is the plugin, the UI. Here I'm using two things, date picker and slider. So if I run this, I'm going to go to part number three, jQuery UI. And I'm going to run this example here. All right, so this is, ah, it's not working. Uh, there's an error. Uh, why is that? Number 13. Oh, OK, uh, something is wrong here. Let me just move. Something's wrong. Okay, there's an echo here. Okay, now there was an echo. All right, 
All right, so when I click here, I have this, okay, this calendar here. And you have different themes, guys. And you can really use diff uh, you can parameterize. You can use the, check the API and uh, see the themes. And I have also here. I have the progress bar, okay, from zero to one hundred or whatever. And you can customize it as well. So all these are found in the this jQuery UI.com. So you can go to jQuery, jQuery, I'm going to open a new one, jQuery.ui, put dot .ui, it's going to give me the jQuery, jQuery UI here. All right, and you have the draggable, you have the widgets here, as you can see, documentation, Let's go to the progress bar here, the one I used, and here you have, okay, uh, this documentation here, you can view the source, how it's written, okay, inspire from it, value 37, oh, I didn't use, uh, sorry, uh, this 37 here, you see, it's, uh, it is 100% is 37, and you can go, the more important thing here is the API documentation. In the API documentation, you will find all the attributes, everything here, all the uh, features, uh, parameters, uh, everything, okay? And examples as well. All right, progress bar here, value 25, destroy, uh, enable, disable, have so many things there, all right? So I leave you to do that or to go through that uh, if you are if you want to use jQuery in your project. So go ahead, guys, and you have to investigate or explore this API. For mobile, uh, jQuery Mobile is a user interface framework. They have a framework here, okay, based on jQuery that works across all popular um, phones, tablets, uh, e-readers, and also desktop platforms. Uh, I'm not going to go through the mobile, when you go and uh, have or when you take the course mobile, you might be needing the jQuery and your teacher will teach you or will show you how to use jQuery. By, by, by then, your teacher will not need to really teach you how to use jQuery in your mobile, you will be um, enough mature to do it yourself. Now, as a conclusion here, there is a trade-off, guys, between using your code 100% or sometimes or, or needing or to use jQuery as your main. Uh, jQuery core is well designed. Uh, jQuery has uh, really good documentation and many users and, and large community as well. But jQuery does not solve your main problems, all right? Your uh, business or core problem problems. You do it yourself, all right? jQuery is mainly for extra for UI, for Ajax maybe, for fast um, access or navigation through your DOM and so on. Do we need jQuery? Personally, I don't need it. I, I seldom use it. Okay, thank you guys and see you uh, later on uh, in the live uh, session. Bye.